name is Jennifer McLaren. I'm a chorister with the Vancouver Chamber Choir, and I'm here today to talk about our upcoming Requiem for Peace concert, which is being held on Saturday, November 19th at 8 p.m. at the Chan Center for the Performing Arts at the University of British Columbia. The concert is being presented in cooperation with a very special exhibit uh, here at the beautiful Museum of Anthropology, which is also on the UBC campus. It's simply entitled Hiroshima. And I'm here today with Karen Duffet, who is the curator of contemporary visual art at the Museum of Anthropology. Thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you. Um, the MOA is the first North American museum, I believe, to host this exhibit. Could you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, we were quite excited to show this work. It's a body of work that has been shown um, different aspects of the work in Japan in about nine different galleries there. Mm -hmm. So it is the first showing of Hiroshima by Ishiichi in North America. Well, and, and generally speaking, what's the content of the exhibit? Um, she went, um, she's a photographer in, in, in Japan. Well, this work here, Hiroshima, she photographed in the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum where they have a collection of 19,000 um, objects left behind mm -hmm. by victims of the atomic bomb. She first went there in 2007 when she was already about 60 years old. It was the first time she'd ever been to Hiroshima. Mm -hmm. So in the exhibit, we have 48 photographs that she took of articles of clothing and other personal things that, that touch the bodies in the sense of the people who were victims in the bomb. What really strikes me about the exhibit is that they depict such a horrific part of world history, of Japan's history and of world history, but yet they are such ordinary items, and, and so many of them, like this one, are, are just beautiful and very, very colorful. Yeah, that's very true. It was very important to her to photograph in color, for one thing, and in so doing, to, she, she feels that she's been lifting some of the weight of that history off of these very everyday things. On uh, the MOA's website, it mentions that the museum is providing a forum for examining issues of war, trauma, and remembrance by presenting a series of public programming in conjunction with the exhibit. And I know our Requiem for Peace concert is one of those, and I know that you have some other speakers and other events happening in conjunction as well. Well, I think that it ties in very well because the artist's whole intention in doing this work is to cast a new light on Hiroshima. And so for this artist to take a new look at that history through every object, I think invites others to do the same thing. When is the exhibit running at? It goes until February 12th, so it has quite a nice long run. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much for uh, spending your time with us uh, today. Um, and we hope that people will be able to come and visit the exhibit over the next few months and maybe possibly just before they come to our recommend for the concert. Thank you once again. Just a short walk away from the UBC's Museum of Anthropology lies the Chan Centre for the Performing Arts. And it's here that the Vancouver Chamber Choir will be premiering the new chamber version of Requiem for Peace by well-known BC composer and member of the Vancouver Chamber Choir bass section, Larry Nichol. We'll catch up with Larry and speak to him a little bit about his work. Larry, thank you very much for joining me today. Requiem for Peace was your doctoral composition at UBC. It's had several performances since that time. But this is not only the first performance of the chamber version of your work. We're being joined by the Vancouver Chamber Ensemble. But it's also the first time that the choir you sing in, the Vancouver Chamber Choir, has sung the work in its entirety. In your dual roles as both a composer and as a chorister, um, what is it like to be presenting this chamber premiere with your singing peer? Well, until this time, I've uh, gone to hear performances of Requiem for Peace, and I sit in the audience and I listen to somebody else do it, mm -hmm. and uh, that's really thrilling. Mm -hmm. But this time, I'm on the inside, and I actually had dis I'm discovering what it's like to sing those bass parts, and uh, I'm surrounded by peers who are all experts in their own rights, not only as singers, but some of them are experts with languages, and so many of them have had suggestions for me. And so I've been able to go back and rewrite certain sections of the, you know, just small sections of the Requiem to make it better. And so that's been a real privilege for me. So your work includes poetry and texts in 11 different languages. 
but why did you feel that it was important to include a variety of different languages in this particular work? In the UBC Choral Union, if you take a look at the makeup of that choir, mm -hmm. you see at least you know, 12 different nationalities being represented there. So I decided that the work, in order to make this work the most relevant to the people who are going to be premiering it, mm -hmm. it would be nice to include them and mm -hmm. their country and poetry from their country. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, I wonder if surely people from China, surely, surely there were pacifists from China and from Japan and from Iran and, and uh, sure enough, uh, people were able to direct into poetry, pacifist poetry from their country. Mm -hmm. And that's how I incorporated it to make an international statement for peace. So I tried to find famous poems from these countries. So Larry, you and I both had the opportunity to visit Hiroshima with the Chamber Choir tour to Japan in 2009. Um, I know that visit was a very personal defining moment for many of us in the choir. Requiem for Peace includes a movement entitled Hiroshima Lacrimosa, which means tears for Hiroshima. Why does an event like Hiroshima continue to captivate our attention? The fear that people have today about the future is that a dirty bomb, a nuclear bomb, uh, is going to get into the wrong hands. And so I think people you know, realize that uh, we have used that bomb in the past mm -hmm. and it could happen again. You know, it's, it's attached to a, a fear, I think, that we have. So it's really important to continue to speak to in an artistic work just to allow people to continue to understand mm -hmm. the horrors of an event like that? That's right. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, Larry. We will see everyone at the Chan Center for the Performing Arts on Saturday, November 19th at 8 p.m. for our Requiem for Peace concert. Thanks again.